All right, I have finished the first part of season four of Stranger Things. The second part comes out in July, so I am all cut up, and I really want to go into spoilers because this fucking character, Vecna, is my favorite, I think my favorite Stranger Things character <laughs> in the entire series. He really might be. He's, he's that much of a badass, but I'll get to spoilers a little later on in this video. Instead of writing out a scripted video, I was just going to kind of do like a little off-the-cuff review for you guys. I'll give you my first general thoughts, then I'll go into a little bit of spoilers. Uh, very first, I want to say that Stranger Things isn't my favorite series of all time or anything. It's a series that I very much do enjoy, but I don't think that anything Stranger Things has ever done beyond the first season has ever even compared to the first season. I think that that was just one of those lightning in a bottle, perfect time, perfect moment, perfect cast, perfect story kind of shows that came out onto Netflix when it did back in like 2015, 2016, whenever it was. And it was just a really special, amazing little season. And I, I loved it. I bought like this uh, special edition, like VHS set of it. It's really cool. Uh, so I love season one. Seasons two and three, I definitely did enjoy. I liked seeing the characters grow up. I do like stories where we see progressions over time and characters kind of like a coming of age story. You know, it already had a very stand by me vibe to it. And that just kind of uh, continues as the series goes on. So I do enjoy those kind of things. And now going into season four, the characters are basically high schoolers, which the actors are even older than that. They're all like 20 years old at this point playing high schoolers, but that's okay because that takes me back to the wonderful time of the 90s where you would have 26-year-olds playing 17-year-olds. You know, it's it's perfectly fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, and also, this show does give me a lot of vibes of that. Also, this season gave me a lot of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer vibes, which is my favorite series of all time. So I love that kind of stuff. Uh, what was great about the introduction of this season, uh, well, first I'll tell you what I didn't like. I don't like that every single episode is like an hour and 20 minutes long. It's just like, that is too long for one episode. I just, I don't know why either, because I could sit and watch a really long movie and feel fine. But for some reason, when I'm watching a TV series, I just need that like every 45 minutes to an hour. I just need that little break, you know, before setting up the next episode. I don't know, minor pet peeve. But going into the first episode of this season, the first episode, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't digging that much. I did enjoy seeing the characters come back. I liked seeing um, the characters separated. One thing that I really love in storytelling and shows, movies, books, whatever, is when you take a core assembled cast that you know works really well together and you sort of like mismatch them or set or separate them or make them interact with characters they're not usually uh, used to interacting with. When they first did the Dustin and Steve team up, I absolutely love that because it's just two characters you never would think would be together. But then when they are, it works really, really well. So I like that some things are happening in Hawkins and some things are happening in uh, you know California or wherever. And then you got Hopper in Russia. So I do like the idea that the characters are separated, split up, multiple storylines going on and how those multiple storylines eventually all cohesively combine into one overall narrative. So uh, really good storytelling as far as that goes. The first episode though, it took me a while to kind of like get back into it. I guess it's been a while since I've watched Stranger Things. So I just was sort of like readjusting to all the characters and where they're at and everything. But then the finale of uh, episode one happened where this guy makes his first appearance. Sorry, no spoilers, but I I just like the hook at the end of the first episode just just had me, man. It felt like classic, like Nightmare on Elm Street vibes. It felt like the scene where you're watching uh, Tina from Nightmare on Elm Street get dragged across the fucking ceiling by Freddy Krueger. Obviously, we have to keep it not quite as R-rated on a Netflix show. Unfortunately, they should just go full hardcore R with the final season. I don't care, man. Let's just do it. But they do go pretty violent with it as far as they can go in like that PG-13 level. Uh, and I really appreciated it for it because watching that scene and you know that they're fans of like 80s horror movies. Obviously, Vecna looks almost just like Freddy Krueger. So you could definitely see that was definitely like a... Nightmare on Elm Street homage when they did that. Loved it, and it set up the entire storyline of the new character, Eddie, who's like this badass, like D&D &D guy, uh, you know, a big nerd, big like, heavy metal guy. Definitely remember, reminded me of myself in high school because not only did I listen to heavy metal all the time, a lot of it was like 80s, 90s metal, and of course I played D&D &D as well. So I definitely like felt 
the the outcast you know um metal kid vibe from him so i really did appreciate that and then the series goes on and begins its multiple storylines and some i like a lot more than others obviously my favorite one is the characters in hawkins dealing with the the vecna problem not just because i think the villain is amazing especially when eventually well i won't get in spoilers yet but uh I, I like this core group of characters better. Dustin's my favorite of the kids, of like the core group of kids. Um, also really like Max. like what they're doing with her, uh, reeling from her brother's death and everything that she's going through. Uh, obviously, when it gets to episode four, there's a great scene with her that everyone's talking about. If you don't know it already, then it's surprising. You must have stayed off social media like forever. Um, but then there's other storylines going on that I'm don't like quite as much the hopper in russia storyline was fine when it was hopper but i will be honest that the story with joyce and i forget the other character's name um going to rescue him there were a lot of scenes with that that i just didn't really care for one because either the comic relief was not working for me i don't really find him to be that amusing as a character but then also there's a shift where you know they need to actually do some serious stuff like serious things are happening and they're in actually very dangerous violent situations and the series does such a good job of making the danger real in other situations whether it's with the horror stuff whether it's actually like within the prison system itself in russia but for some reason when it comes to dangerous situations where joyce who's just like an average everyday like older woman like she's not you know, she's not some, like, military trained or, you know, any, like, there's, she's just a regular, like, 40, 50-year-old woman, you know? And then the other character, who they get by by saying that he takes some, like, martial arts classes, but you still, you look at him and you look how he interacts and stuff, and I just, like, there are things that they did with those two characters that I just don't buy in the dangerous situations that they're in. So that's a minor pet peeve, but every time it would cut back to them and they were doing more things like that... It really put me off because I, I think that one of the great things about Stranger Things is that it puts everyday regular people within these like horrific situations. You know, like most of the characters, besides Hopper, who's a cop, and Eleven, who obviously has, you know, psychic abilities through most of the series, everyone else is just a regular person. So when a regular person is in these situations, I like to see it be a little bit more threatening. I like to see it be a little bit more, uh, the stakes be a little bit higher. Um, or that they receive injuries or repercussions for trying to do like heroic things and, and that doesn't really happen with them but all that aside overall i really did enjoy everything that i was watching now the stuff with 11 that too was probably my second to least favorite after the the joyce stuff but as it went on because at first you, you don't really know where it's going to go we're doing this sort of like flashback sequence with 11 um, kind of going back into her childhood and the things that happened when she was experimented on with everybody. And it, in the beginning of that, it sort of felt like, yeah, I've seen this before. In the beginning of it, it felt like, didn't we already cover this kind of stuff? But there was a few gaps and, and a few bits of mystery that still lingered there. And with every episode, you get a little bit more information and you start to piece it together. And by episode six, I knew the twist that was going to happen with it. And when episode seven happens, the, the last episode of this half, when that twist does drop, even though I called what it was going to be, I was still like absolutely enthralled within the monologue, within the cutting, within how everything was kind of making sense and coming together. I was absolutely on board with it. So it's one of those instances where there is a big twist, but even if you are able to call out the twist, it doesn't ruin the twist from being a great narrative moment. And it really, really is. Uh, so overall, I would say that I really did enjoy this season so far. Uh, hopefully the second half and the finale will wrap it up and everything will come together in a, in a great kind of crazy bombastic way. I would like to see some character deaths. I know, I'm sorry, but I just would. I'm just that kind of guy. Um, but I, I would say that if you are a Stranger Things fan and you haven't watched this yet uh, and you are like on the fence for some reason, I do think this is very well worth watching. Uh, if you're just like a sci-fi horror fan in general, I also think it's worth watching. Um, obviously, you're going to be a little bit lost if you haven't seen the rest of Stranger Things. But uh, I do enjoy this and I think this is probably 
the best season um, besides the first that will never be touched in a million years. So yeah, overall, really enjoyed it, guys. Let me know what you think about it down below. Now, real quick, I want to get into spoilers on this character. So if you haven't seen it yet, this is your last warning. Uh, let's go. Vecna is fucking awesome. All right. So, okay. The thing about Vecna is when I first saw this character, uh, his first introduction of killing the, that one preppy character, whatever her name was, I forget. And like the bones break in and her eyes sink in and everything. Like I said, reminded me of Nightmare on Elm Street, the first kill with Nancy, which was, which was great. It warmed my eighties horror fan heart. Uh, but then going on a little bit further about seeing him, I remember there was this one moment where it shows him and he has like all these tentacles everywhere coming out of his back. They're the things that like connect him to the consciousness of the people that he's murdering. But I saw the tentacles and you know me, like I've seen enough anime and manga in my life where when I see tentacles, I'm just like, no, please not with the tentacles. And then in episode four, when Max is getting attacked, she literally gets like wrapped up in the tentacles and I'm like, this is PG-13, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, it was bad, bro. My mind just went into really bad places. Um, but, but regardless of his tentacle abilities, I loved the presence of him. I love the danger of him. I love how threatening he is. I love how he's manipulating people's, you know, uh, minds and stuff, like getting to the point before he kills them. I also enjoyed the theme of him killing people to relieve them of their trauma and their, tra their traumatic experiences. Because, there's a spoiler territory... The entire backstory with Eleven was actually telling us the story of how Vecna was created, where he was actually number one. Out of all the experimented children, he was number one. And even goes into a flashback um, about how he was first getting his abilities and everything. And what I loved about the character's philosophy is how he saw how ridiculous everything was within the human world. Like basically how I'm always saying like we're trapped in a matrix, right? Everyone is told to do this and that and there's these social norms and social conventions, things that don't make sense. We're not living freely. Like we believe that we're free but we're really locked within this system and everyone just goes along with it and plays along with it and he wanted to be outside of the system. He believed himself to be above it because he could see it and because he didn't play into it. And I could definitely see how that would transform somebody into a villainous character because you get to the point where you feel like you are such an outcast. And this goes into the themes of Stranger Things and being an outcast. You know, the main characters are nerds that play D&D. &D. You know, it, it goes into the themes of everything that the story tries to talk about. And, and he's like, I can't do it. I cannot stand this. I can't abide just living within this world, within this systematic uh, you know, establishment that other people have created that I have to play by your rules. He's like, I have power. I don't have to play by your rules. And, and with that, it sort of drives him into that darkness that winds him up being the first child that's experimented on because of how dangerous he is. And they make him a little bit docile. And as he grows up, I, I love that he, uh, he basically manipulates Eleven to free him. And he sees something special in her. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to harm her. He doesn't want to kill her. He actually like has this empathy. I believe he has true empathy for her, at least for a majority of the of the season, and not just using her. He is using her, but I do believe that he does have empathy for her as well. Uh, until he plans this whole escape for her, and he says that oh, I have this tracking chip in my neck. Like they won't. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't escape with you because she doesn't know that he has any powers whatsoever. She just sees him as somebody working there. So she removes the tracking chip with her powers, which was actually a suppressant for his abilities. Then he goes on a rampage, murders everybody. And as he's murdering them, again, very similar to Freddy Krueger, like absorbing their souls, he's basically relieving them. Or he believes that he's relieving them from being trapped within this system, from being trapped within their trauma, from needing to do things that other people are telling them to do. So it's this twisted way of like bringing them salvation by destroying them, like by murdering them and then breaking, like taking on their pain, taking on their, their ability. So it's sort of like he's like, I don't know the antichrist. I don't know what do you want to call it? Like, taking on the misfortune of like relieving other people of their trauma and like absorbing them into himself. Now, I don't know if this gives him more trauma. I don't think it actually does. I think it just makes him more powerful, but I like the idea behind it. 
Um, and then the final episode, you know, Eleven zaps him into the the upside down world where he like falls, gets electrocuted, you know, all this shit's happening. It's great, and he starts to begin his transformation into Vecna, which uh, was great. And we don't get the full transformation; we just sort of see like his like first arrival there. So we also don't know if he's if he is working for the Mind Flare or if he is, you know, how much like autonomy he has over himself still. Because it seems like he's still just doing what he would have been doing as a human, but now he has these other world powers uh, that even enhance his own. So is he working purely for himself or is he like, you know, in service of that world of the Mind Flare, you know? And if that's the case, would he want to break out of that? Because it seemed like everything he was trying to do as a human was to break out of the chains that the world, society, you know, his masters, his father, everybody put on him. So he, he didn't, he wanted absolute freedom in that way. So it, it would be strange to me to see that now as Vecna that he's still taking orders from something above himself because that I feel like that would go against what he was doing before unless there's some re- there's more story that we need to be told that will lead us there so I don't know but I love this character loved his design loved his powers loved his philosophy probably my favorite stranger things character I don't know what that says about me as a person but I promise until I get psychic abilities I won't harm you <laughs> Uh, so let me know what you guys think about Stranger Things Season 4 down below if you've watched it. Uh, let me know all your thoughts, theories, comments. What are you looking forward to in the continuation? How do you want to see it end? Let me know all that down below. Again, thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. This video probably won't get as many views as my usual videos do since it's not anime related. But if you enjoyed it, uh, please give it a thumbs up because that would that would really help the video out. Other than that, guys, I love you all. Talk to you next time. Have a good one.